Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is one of my worm bins that I compost household scraps and whatnot in. And I've got my glove here all set to go, but before I get suited up to begin work on this feeding, I thought I'd share some information about this system with you really quick. It's a, uh, it's a bin of red wiggler worms. I've got a few varieties, but the red wigglers are probably the most common type that most people use for this activity. It might be kind of a regional thing or whatever the case may be. This system's been in service now for 158 days, and like a lot of my systems, it's been paired up with another similar system, but for 40 days now, that system's been elsewhere on what I've been referring to as sort of a special assignment or a special mission, and the mission will be revealed at some point, but it's been kept under covers for the most part, not knowing if it's going to be successful or not. Early indications are so showing that it's going to be a fairly successful mission but we're going to keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best and at some point soon we'll have the reveal for that it's been a couple weeks now since we last fed this system 14 days since the last check-in at which point they received their 14th feeding today they're getting their 15th feeding nothing terribly out of the ordinary i've got a i've got a frozen orange here and usually when i've got something like this which is too hard for me to cut open. I mean, it, it seems like I might be able to if I wanted to, but I want to at least provide the worms with a few access points into the fruit. And, and then if need be, we can try to squish it apart and break it apart better in future check-ins. And I've also got a package of raspberries that went bad here. Somebody that's been paying close attention might notice that there were a couple of those um, a couple of those packages of raspberries that went bad. Another one was fed to a different system recently. So at some point soon we'll be teaming this system back up with its buddy bin or its sister bin. But for now we're only feeding this one today. And what we have here is a coffee filter which was laid out across the spot where we last fed. And it's interesting, these little curled up, I don't know if it's visible on the camera, but what's going on over here are these little curled up insects. I believe that these are centipedes. I'm not sure if they're coming through on the camera, but they they seem to be in here in good numbers. I see one, two, three, four, five, not even centipedes. I'm sorry. I believe these are millipedes. If they were centipedes, they would have been trying to run away already by now, and I'd probably trying to <laughs> I'd be probably trying to squash them. I don't worry too much about the millipedes when I see them. It's the centipedes that I consider to be unwelcome visitors in the worm bins. Because they prey on the worms, or I guess at least on the baby worms, I think. I'm not even 100% sure, but I do know that they're not considered as friendly to the worms. And they do prey on them. So I've got what was at one point a top covering of some leafy material spread out across the top. I'm just going to kind of nudge that stuff aside. This stuff is really nicely seasoned. There's not a whole lot of it here either. I thought we might use it as the uh, foundation for today's feeding. All right, and you know what else we could do is we can even use the uh, this old coffee filter as bedding down in our feeding area too, because I do have a couple new coffee filters that we could replace that old one with. So the feeding they got two weeks ago I mean, chances are we're not going to see too many leftovers of it. But there was one part of it that I was curious of. It was a it was a banana that was more or less just kind of cut in half. Um, wasn't peeled open. I guess maybe it was bruised up or whatever. It was decided that it wouldn't be eaten by humans, but it became worm food. And I just wondered what kind of shape that thing is in. I don't recall if it was on the edge of the bin that's closer to me or the one that's further away. But I'm trying to carefully excavate so that I could check that thing out see if it's still sort of just a um you know still a closed hole into which the I assume the worms would have burrowed in to get the soft parts of the banana out most likely leaving the peel of it intact for the most part it seems unlikely that in two weeks that they'd be able to nibble through the the banana peel itself but I'm guessing that if they did stumble on that, they probably emptied it out. So it's probably just like a hollow banana peel. 
I've seen a couple banana peels as I was moving along here. I think that's what I saw here. No, I think that might be something else as a matter of fact. It would be interesting if they actually did do away with it in the past two weeks. Because normally after I come back into a bin after feeding banana, I don't expect to see much of the actual fruity part of it inside. I usually expect to see only the peels themselves. And usually I'm, you know, not feeding banana itself to the worms. I'm usually giving them just peels. But in that case, they got pretty much a half of a banana. These things are, these things are corn cobs. And I think what I have here is maybe the two halves of it. I think I had split this in half at one point. And it's very mushy and very soft. It seems like it's going to be broken up in no time. It just seems like some of these, um, the fibers are what's kind of holding it together still, barely. Hmm, interesting that I didn't stumble on the banana peel. Hmm, maybe I just wasn't careful enough. I know it was pretty much smack in the middle. And I felt like I went through this stuff pretty thoroughly. But maybe not thoroughly enough to find it. Alright, well... Whatever the case may be, maybe as we're covering up the feeding area, we'll stumble on it. Here's more corn cobs. Holding up pretty good. I am starting to run low, although I think I might still have a few more left in my freezer. Most of the food that the worms get gets frozen first so that it has a better um, shelf life. So it doesn't start just rotting at room temperature until I have a chance to give it to the worms. And I think just the freezing and thawing process also helps accelerate the breakdown process of the stuff that the worms are fed kind of jump starting the composting process okay I guess what I was trying to do was pile up the stuff that I'm excavating out of the feeding area in such a way that I don't cover up all this stuff that I collected in the beginning that was out on the surface because that's the stuff that I wanted to drop down into the feeding area as the foundation for today's feeding. I've also got some of my my prepared bedding we can include here too. So why don't we begin reconstructing our feeding zone down here with some of these nicely seasoned materials including this nicely seasoned coffee filter. Here's a little bit more of this leafy material. Alright, not bad, not bad. I guess all these leftover bits of Food that I encountered along the way can go right back down in there too. So weird that we didn't find that half of a banana peel. Perhaps now I can just go through the leftovers a little bit more carefully as I try to find larger chunks to return down into the into the line of fire to let the stuff continue getting broken down. Okay, pretty sure I placed all the large bits of leftovers over on this side but I'm going to check over here too to see if I left any over there hmm. man if they ate that whole thing I'm pretty impressed because the one the one statistic I did not include in that little write-up was the the estimated number of worms in here because I'm a little skeptical of whether or not that information is even accurate because we had at one point estimated that we were starting this bin with fewer than 900 worms. But as I go through here, I just for, sort of have this feeling like there's way more in here than that. Alright, so like I said, we're going to be upgrading them with a nice oops, new coffee filter in the end. Seems like these still had a good bit of coffee in them. <laughs> I guess once they dry, the coffee comes falling out quite readily. But why don't we go ahead and empty this right into here. I spent a little bit of time the other day shredding a whole bunch of paper and cardboard so I'll be able to replenish my supply there. But it's nice that we were able to drop in a little bit of extra bedding today. So like I said, I don't want to drop this cold orange right on top of some worms that I might have placed in below. So I wanted to drop in that, uh, that prepared bedding first. So besides this, I've also got a little bit of coffee that we can give them. Let's drop that in here too, as long as we're at it. 
and then we can consider this system as fed for the most part something that I don't always include in all my feedings but once in a while I do is this pulverized eggshell and you know why not I got a little bit of this worm chow but you know what let's hold off on the worm chow momentarily I've also got my BTI mosquito dunks solution that I'd like to just gently include a little bit here down in the feeding and just in the in the material in general throughout as sort of a preventative measure to see if we can keep the flying insects at bay it does seem to work pretty well and well here we go we're just piling worm a densely populated pile of material with a whole bunch of worms in it right on top of that frozen orange <laughs> so hopefully they're wily enough to get away from it if they don't want to be in contact with it and now we've got our feeding zone nicely covered up so when we took off that covering plastic all we really had on here was that feeding zone indicator and they'll get the feeding zone indicator restored once we've had a chance to look around here but before we start covering up with the feeding zone indicator and some other things I like to examine the outer edges of the systems too really quick just to make sure things out there look okay for a 158 day old system this is doing quite nicely lots and lots of castings out here I guess that's just sort of the way I've been managing my bins lately is that when I feed down the middle I'm just sort of moving all the finished stuff further out each time but I don't want it to just be castings out there. As long as the worms are going to be out there anyway, I want to kind of mix in some of this stuff that I've got, you know, this residual bits of bedding and food and whatnot to put it out there too. So the feeding zone is not just the middle as far as I'm concerned. I want the whole bin to be, you know, a place where the worms are comfortable and have food and whatever they need. The bedding in here might be a little bit, I don't know, a little bit skimpy because we certainly didn't add a lot of it today. I mean, I gave them everything I had remaining, but maybe the next time we come in here, we can be a little bit more generous. All right, well, let's see how things on this edge look, and then we can cover up and put away. I was updating my tracking system yesterday to try to see what my most current average of lifespan of my bins is, and in the past, I had always treated it as 150 days being kind of my target for getting my bins to go to 150 days before harvesting. Obviously, this, is, this bin has already exceeded that by more than a week. But my, my average is growing at this point. So my average is now up to 175, which factors in some of my more recently harvested systems that were harvested beyond 200 days of age. And that's kind of, you know, where I'm headed, I think. And I don't think it's necessary to bring a system to its end so quickly. Especially if there's room remaining in their box to keep going. But you can see how I work, you know. I, I tend to, you know, pile stuff up and move things around. So I do want to always leave myself a little bit of unused space that I can work in to pile stuff up. And to be able to nudge things around without risk of pouring it over the edge and all over the place but usually it's the capacity of the system that I feel dictates bringing the system to an end I mean we've gone through this quite thoroughly and I see no signs of that banana peel oddly enough and I did review the video briefly just to make sure that this was that system in which I had put that object for feeding and I guess in the the mad scramble to get into the inside of the banana peel they um they just ate the peel itself i guess you know which is kind of neat okay all right i think i've got a pretty good level surface here now i was going to upgrade them not only with uh you know let's give them a little bit of worm chow out here on the surface too why not not going to give them too much just a little sprinkling across the top All right, so let's grab one of these coffee filters to replace the one that we placed down into the feeding area as the as the just a supplement to their bedding. Now, 
a couple things that I'm going to add here rather than going straight for the plastic covering. I'm going to give them a nice top covering of newspaper. It goes almost all the way edge to edge. A little bit of gap here and there, but I seem to have fashioned it pretty nicely as far as the good fit into this box. And now we'll put on the uh, the plastic covering. But I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna start restoring something that I had always used in the past to try to keep things nice and dark under here for the worms to feel, you know, more inclined to travel out there. It's just a little more for the shade, I guess. Maybe it has just a little bit of extra weight to push down because I think worms also like having that little bit of resistance, something that they could push up against, especially when they're trying to dislodge a cocoon that's ready to be um, deposited into the, into the system. So we're just upgrading them with a replacement feeding zone indicator, a nice replacement well, a nice new top covering of newspaper, as well as a, a cardboard shade over the plastic covering to provide darkness, which will hopefully inspire the worms to come out into the surface a little bit more and treat that as a place to hang out too, other than being put off by the bright lights. All right, everyone, I think we've reached the end of this check-in, perhaps a little longer than I expected it to be, but that's okay. It's always fun to <laughs> hang out with the worms and see how they're doing. And I still got a little bit of work to do here in terms of cleaning stuff and putting it all away. But I'm not going to waste your time with that. That's boring. Before I go really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. It's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.